Today we're going over the three muscles of the anterior compartment of the upper arm. The origins, insertions, actions, and innervations, and of course a few ways to remember this stuff for later. So to start off with, the classic way to remember these three muscles is with the acronym BBC. So we have the biceps brachii, the brachialis, and then the coroco brachialis. So let's start at the top and get a little in-depth with the biceps brachii. So like the name implies, the biceps brachii is a two-headed muscle. The interesting thing about the biceps is that it does not actually connect to the humerus itself. So it originates on the scapula and then inserts on the forearm and the radius. So one way you can remember that is instead of biceps, think about biceps because it basically skips over the humerus and that'll remind you of the origin and insertion. If we're looking closely at the origins of the two heads, the easiest way to remember this is to make a little C with your index finger and your thumb and then place it on your anterior shoulder. So the shorter of these fingers, your thumb, will represent the short head of biceps tendon. That tendon connects to the coracoid process of the scapula, which is directly underneath your thumb. The longer of these fingers, your index finger represents the long head of the biceps tendon, and basically it reminds you that it runs laterally, it goes up through the bicipital groove, which is directly underneath your index finger, it then is a medial turn and it connects at the supraglenoid tubercle. So if we take a look at our model, we can kind of understand these relationships a little bit better. So we start off, of course, with the humerus and the scapula. This represents the long head of the biceps tendon. It runs through the bicipital groove and then does a quick medial turn and originates at the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. It also meshes with the superior labrum. Right here, we have the apex of the coracoid process, which is where the short head of the biceps originates. And right here, it's kind of skipping ahead, but this is where the long head of the triceps originates. And this kind of helps me put it all together because the long head of the biceps again originates at the supraglenoid tubercle while the long head of the triceps originates at the infraglenoid tubercle so i just remember the long heads love the glenoid the biceps at the supra and the triceps at the infra now let's get into the insertions of the biceps brachii so we know it originates from the scapula it runs down and blends into one muscle and then if we make our little c shape again and place it over our elbow that will remind us of the two insertion points. The first one is the radial tuberosity of the radius, which is directly underneath your thumb if you make this kind of shape here. It also connects to the bicipital aponeurosis, which is a sheet of fascia that's underneath your index finger. So this sheet of fascia kind of blends together with the tendon and kind of makes sure that the biceps can grab the whole forearm and perform some elbow flexion. The biceps crosses two joints, so it can perform a few different actions. At the shoulder, it can assist with shoulder flexion, raising up like that. It connects to the radius at the radial tuberosity, so it can pull and assist with supination. It's actually the most powerful supinator in the body. It also performs elbow flexion, but it's most powerful when you're supinating and performing elbow flexion at the same time. If you grab your biceps and turn your wrist like that when it's contracted, you'll feel that muscle kind of give out. That's because it's no longer in a mechanical advantage. So again, it's most powerful when you're supinated and flexing, that's when it's the best. Of course, it's not the most powerful elbow flexor. The brachialis muscle that we'll talk about next is about 50% stronger than the biceps when it comes to elbow flexion. The brachialis lies deep to the biceps brachii and it attaches on the anterior humeral shaft about one third down on the same level of the deltoid where the deltoid would attach to. From there, it runs down and connects to the ulna on the ulnar tuberosity and the coronoid process. One thing that always confused me is you have the coronoid and the coracoid, so how do you keep those apart? Well, the coronoid with an N is on the ulna also with an N. The coracoid with a C is on the scapula, also with a C, so that kind of breaks them up. As for action, the brachialis, as we mentioned, is the strongest elbow flexor in the body. It's about 50% stronger than the biceps when it comes to elbow flexion. The way I can remember the brachialis is it's kind of like the person that's behind the stage, kind of doing most of the work, but never gets any of the credit. The biceps brachii always steals the show. So I kind of think of the brachialis as working brack stage. That kind of reminds me that it's deep to the biceps, but it's 50% stronger when it comes to elbow flexion. It's doing most of the work, basically. Now for our third and last muscle, we have the coracobrachialis. And the good news about this muscle is that the name alone basically tells us where this muscle runs. The croco part is in reference to the coracoid process, which we're pretty familiar with now. If we do our little C trick, 
and place it over the shoulder, it'd be right underneath the thumb. So it originates at the coracoid process and runs to the brachium, which is just Latin for the humerus, and that's where it inserts. So as for actions, since it inserts on the anterior medial side of the humerus, it can help with uh, shoulder flexion and shoulder adduction. So if you're going to do both, this would kind of be the main movement of the coroco brachialis. Now for the innervation of these three muscles, the musculocutaneous nerve innervates all three of these muscles as well as provides sensory information from the lateral forearm. The way I remember this is just by tracing the path of the nerve with my finger and I repeat it a few times and kind of locks it in with a little motor repetition. So to do this, we start at the brachial plexus somewhere around here. It starts from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and then runs laterally to reach the lateral forearm. So what I do is I think about musculocutaneous. Musculocutaneous. Why musculo? Because it innervates all the muscles of this anterior compartment. Why cutaneous? Because it innervates the skin and sensory information of the lateral forearm. So just try that a few times. Remember musculo, cutaneous, and that'll help you remember the path and what it does for the musculocutaneous nerve. Now there is one caveat here, and that's that the brachialis muscle in most people is slightly innervated by the radial nerve. So the majority is the musculocutaneous, but the lateral side, the lateral little sliver is innervated by, in most people, by the radial nerve. So the way I remember this is I think about the brachialis is just out there breaking trends. So all the other muscles are innervated by one nerve, but the brachialis is breaking trends and it's innervated by two nerves, at least in most people. All right, that covers the three muscles of the anterior compartment. Stay tuned because we're going to cover the rest of the arm as well. As always, thanks for watching and of course, good luck on your next test.